going on kids? Pastor Jacob here with another Life Group video. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today we're back in the book of Nehemiah. Do you remember where to find Nehemiah? Nehemiah is in the Old Testament. Nehemiah comes after the book of Ezra and before the book of Esther. Today we got a lot of chapters to cover. So we're going to start off in Nehemiah chapter 3. So take a minute and find the big number three in Nehemiah. We left off last week with Nehemiah heading off to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah knew there was a lot of work ahead of him and for the people of Jerusalem. First, Nehemiah divided the workers that he had and set them to work on the gates across Jerusalem. He had people working on the fish gate. It's not a fish, this is a seahorse, but it's the closest I had, so... Just go with it, all right? He had people working on the sheep gate and the horse gate. Thank you, Mr. Pony, for filling in today. And he had people working on the east gate and many other gates. All the gates and all the towers had a team working on them. With the gates finished, Nehemiah set the teams on finishing the walls that connected all the gates. But things were not all peaches and butterflies. Oh, no. There was a group of people who were not happy about Jerusalem rebuilding their walls. They started to make fun of the Israelites. How foolish these people think they are that they can rebuild these walls. <laughs> Nehemiah wasn't going to let these people stop him from working though. Again, Nehemiah prayed to God for strength. The people of Jerusalem kept working. They weren't going to let anyone distract them. But as the walls began to be rebuilt and get closer to getting finished, the people who were making fun of the Israelites started to get a little nervous. They started thinking they really might actually get this wall done. So they decided that they're going to send Nehemiah a letter saying, Come on down, Nehemiah. Meet with us. Nehemiah looked at this letter. He knew. They were just trying to distract him. They were trying to discourage him and his people from finishing the wall. Nehemiah responded and said, nope, I have a job to do. The same people sent the same letter four times. They were trying everything they could to stop Nehemiah. But every time, Nehemiah said, no way, dude, you're not stopping me. Then they decided to send a fifth letter. And this letter told Nehemiah that they were going to go to the king and tell him all these lies about Nehemiah and cause trouble for him. Oh, Nehemiah didn't fall for this one either, though. Nehemiah again turned to God in prayer so that he could be strengthened. And he, along with everyone else, continued to work on rebuilding the walls. Before long, the wall was done. It only took the people 52 days to finish the entire wall. When the people who were trying to bully Nehemiah heard about it, they got scared because they knew that God was with his people and helped them obey. The Israelites gathered to celebrate what God had done. Singers and musicians gathered. People climbed to the top of the wall and Nehemiah led them in praising and thanking God. I've loved going through the book of Nehemiah because Nehemiah gives us just a great example of what it looks like to be a godly leader. First, Nehemiah prayed. We saw that last week and we saw that this week, that Nehemiah continued to pray to God to give him strength and give him wisdom. Every time something came up, Nehemiah kept praying. Second, Nehemiah let other people help him. Sometimes we may think that it's just easier for us to do all the work ourselves because we know that we can do a good job. But good leaders know how to let other people help them, especially when it comes to working for God. God wants to use everybody who's willing to work, not just one person. Then Nehemiah showed us how we should celebrate and give glory to God when the work is done. 
Nehemiah could have kicked back and said, look at this great work I've done. I got this whole wall built in 52 days. Look at how great I am. But Nehemiah knew that it was really God who finished the wall. And if it wasn't for God giving Nehemiah the strength and the wisdom that he needed, that wall would have still been broken. I know this lesson may be hard to see how it matters to you right now, but there's actually a lot of ways that it can help you. I know a lot of you play sports. When you play sports, you work as a team. And when you play team sports, there are times when someone needs to step up and be a leader with the rest of the team. Well, you can look at Nehemiah to learn how to be a leader on your sports team. We should always keep God first. So if your team is losing or things just aren't going your way, you may be getting frustrated. But if God's the first thing on your mind, he's going to remind you that being mad at your teammates isn't the right thing to do. We also learned leaders know how to get others to help. So say you play baseball. You probably know that everyone running to the ball that was just hit is not a good idea. Some people need to stay close to the bases to try to get the runner out. You can lead by helping your teammates work together. And then Nehemiah also teaches us to not take all the praise. You may have played a big part in your team winning, but it's still the team that won. So you should celebrate your whole team and how hard you work together. Take some time as a family and discuss how you can each be a leader like me. It's time for our memory verse. I hope you know where to find our memory verse this month. Our memory verse is in Psalm chapter 100, verse 4. Remember, Psalms is in the middle of your Bible. Then, once you find Psalms, you're looking for the big number 100. So take a minute and find Psalm chapter 100, verse 4. Okay, you ready to practice your memory verse? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Psalm 100, verse 4. And for our preschoolers, give thanks to God and bless his name. Psalm 100, verse 4. We're going to practice our motions again for this verse. Are you ready? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You got that one? That's the first part of our verse. Let's do that one more time together. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. All right, you ready for the second part? Give thanks to him and bless his name. That's great. Let's do the whole verse one time together. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Psalm chapter 100, verse 4. Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Emily here with Craft Time. I hope you all have had an incredible week. Mr. Jacob shared today about how Nehemiah led the people to finish building the wall. Nehemiah encouraged the people to work together to finish a big goal. Today, I thought we could build a wall around a city to protect the people and temple inside. You can do this lots of different ways. You can take boxes and blocks and things all around your house to build a life-size wall. Work with your brothers or sisters or mom and dad to see how big you can make it. Or you can make a tiny wall. I used marshmallows and icing to make my wall on my plate. Can you tell that I like to use food to build things? While you build, take some time as a family and discuss how you can each be a leader like with Nehemiah. I hope you all have a great week. Bye.